Warning, if you're a Christian who is comfortable with your beliefs and you do not want to change, or worse still, if you're someone who is not interested in the truth, then I suggest you stop this video right now and leave. Because this video series which I'm about to present to you will be engaging, thought-provoking, serious, and very damaging to the Christian doctrine of the deity of Jesus Christ, peace be upon him. However, if you're someone who is interested to know the truth about Jesus, peace be upon him, then I suggest you listen carefully and take notes, and after each of these videos, pray about what I say and research it for yourself. Now let's begin with the introduction. This video series will be called 110% Proof Jesus is Not God. In these videos, I will share with you the result of my personal research, thoughts, and prayers on the alleged divinity of Jesus Christ, the issue of whether he is God or not. For what truly matters is that the truth of God be known and that he be exalted above all falsehood, and that truth be known, of course, to humanity. Dear Christians and Muslims watching this video, first let us say a short prayer together, asking God for his loving guidance before we begin this in-depth analysis. O oh God Almighty, Creator of heaven and earth, God of Abraham, God of us all, please guide us to your truth about everything that I'm about to present in this video. Amen. Amen. Also, just a quick note for the Muslims watching these videos. Uh, you might hear me talk about certain Christian concepts which may be new to you. For example, Christians believe that basically Jesus existed as the fully glorified, all-powerful, unlimited God before he was born as a baby here on earth. But while living on earth as a human, or rather as the incarnated God-man, you know, someone who's basically God and man at the same time, Jesus was no longer the fully glorified God that he had previously been because he took upon himself human limitations in the Incarnation when he became human. Then, after Jesus allegedly died and was raised to life again, he once again went back to being that unlimited, all-powerful, fully functional God, fully glorified God, that he was before he was born on earth. It sounds ridiculous, I know, and very blasphemous, but I just want you, the Muslims, to understand these three different stages or Christian concepts of the life of Jesus that we hear so much from them. So let's begin with video number one. Here we go. Mark chapter 13, verse 32, I quote, But about that day or hour, no one knows, not even the angels in heaven, nor the Son, meaning Jesus, but only the Father, meaning God. This is a quote from the New International Version of the Bible. The same quote can also be found in Mark, uh, sorry, Matthew chapter 24, verse 36. To comprehend what is going on here, we first need to understand the context of this verse. The disciples had asked Jesus, peace be upon him, when will the hour of Jesus' return be? Jesus replied that he did not know the day or the hour. In other words, he did not know the time when this event will occur. My contention is that the Bible verse, this Bible verse proves Jesus is not God because he lacked the knowledge of the time of his return, but God knows all things. It's simple, right? Case closed. Mark chapter 13, verse 32 says Jesus can never be considered divine, and the Christians cannot d deny this, right? Unfortunately, as you will see in these videos, Christians have cleverly devised a number of explanations, or apo apologetic explanations, rather, to deal with the problem of Mark chapter 13, verse 32. In this video, I intend to refute them all with the grace of Almighty God. But first, I will give you a quote from a book called A Ransom for Many, which is a commentary on the Gospel of Mark. It says regarding Mark chapter 13, verse 32, quote, However, there is a well-known difficulty in what Jesus says here. Indeed, it could be said that Mark chapter 13, verse 32 is one of the most difficult verses in the Bible. 
Jesus is saying, the only person who knows when I am returning is the Father. The Son does not know. In other words, Jesus himself doesn't know. Now that you can see that even the Christians recognize that Mark chapter 13 verse 32 presents Christianity with a theological nightmare or dilemma, let's go through the main Christian explanations and refute them all. They are as follows. Number one, the words, nor the Son, are not original to the Gospel text. Number two, Jesus knew the time of his return, but he voluntarily chose to limit the use of his divine attribute of omniscience, or all knowledge. Number three, Mark chapter 13, verse 32, is an issue of divine authority, not divine knowledge. And number four, Jesus fully knew as God, but he did not know as man. Number five, it's an issue of translation. The words does not know in the, Greek, in the Greek can mean does not make known or does not reveal. And number six, Muslims can't even quote Mark chapter 13 verse 32 because it calls Jesus the Son of God, which is a title that the Quran forbids. So let's deal with explanation number one from these Christians and refute it. The words, nor the Son, are not original to the Gospel text. Just a quick reminder here. We are not only talking about Mark chapter 13, verse 32, but as I also said, it's a, it's a quote from Mark chapter 24, verse 36. Because both verses say the same thing, they are parallel verses. In this case, the Christians are denying the words, nor the Son, in, Mark, in Matthew's Gospel, not in Mark's Gospel. I have already quoted Mark chapter 13, verse 32, but for the sake of transparency, here is the quote from Matthew chapter 24, verse 36 also. Jesus said, quote, But about that day or hour no one knows, not even the angels in heaven, nor the Son, meaning Jesus himself, but only the Father, meaning God. This is again a quote from the New International Version of the Bible. In an attempt to deal with this serious theological problem, some troubled Christians have become very desperate and have gone so far as to deny that the words, nor the Son, are original to the Bible text, because they are said to be not found in the majority of Greek manuscripts of the Gospel of Matthew. You can understand the desperation here. These words are a stumbling block for Christians because they fly into the face of the doctrine of the alleged divinity of Jesus. So here's my refutation. I refute this desperate claim by informing these Christians that the words, nor the Son, are indeed found in the original Codex Sinaiticus and Codex Vaticanus, and many other Bible manuscripts. For those who don't know, the Codex Sinaiticus and Codex Vaticanus are the earliest, most complete copies of the New Testament manuscripts that we have today. Not only that, but the vast majority of conservative Christian Bible scholars believe these words were originally part of Matthew's Gospel. For example, the footnote for Matthew 24, verse 36 in my Bible, the New American Bible, states, quote, Many textual witnesses omit, nor the Son, which follows Mark chapter 13, verse 32. Since its omission can be explained by reluctance to attribute ignorance to the Son, meaning Jesus, the reading that includes it is probably original. End quote. Even more certainly, the words, nor the Son, are definitely found in Mark chapter 13, verse 32. And Mark's gospel, of course, predates Matthew's. Therefore, if you're a believing Christian, the words, nor the Son, should be accepted as original. In any case, it really does not matter whether the words nor the Son are original or not to the Gospel of Matthew because the verse clearly says, quote, only the Father knows the time of Jesus' second coming. The words, quote, only the Father, end quote, makes the meaning crystal clear that the Son, meaning Jesus, is excluded from possessing this knowledge. So the whole argument of the Christians who adopt 
this desperate attempt to disqualify the words nor the sun is irrelevant and refuted. I hope to see you again next time in video number two when we refute the second Christian explanation for Mark chapter 13 verse 32. Praise and glory be to God Almighty, Allah. Peace be upon you. Salaamu Alaikum.